Has my search for a good Gundam game on PC finally come to an end? It's no big secret there's a very apparent lack of quality Gundam games available on Steam, especially now that Gundam Evolution is no longer available, which, even if I wasn't the biggest fan of the game personally, there were quite a number of people that enjoyed it and were sad to see it leave. But during a recent Steam sale, something caught my eye. SD Gundam Battle Alliance. Now, I remember back a couple years ago when this was releasing, it sort of caught my attention, but with the price point of $59.99 and not so great reviews, it sort of fell off my radar and I just lost interest. $23.99 was a tempting price though, so without further ado, let's dive in and see if this is one worth checking out. Alright, to start off, let's talk story, and we'll keep it brief. You assume the role of a character that's referred to only as Commander, and find yourself working to assist a programmer named Juno with correcting anomalies in the G-Universe. These anomalies are referred to as breaks, and occur when characters sort of swap places with characters of another timeline, threatening to alter the course of Gundam history. We're first introduced to this early when Rambaral is about to assault White Base, but suddenly, his goof is replaced by the Barbados, forcing us to fight it. Scenarios similar to this play out across events for multiple Gundam shows, including Zeta, Seed, Unicorn, War in the Pocket, Double O, and more. Char's counterattack is even covered. As you progress and complete various break missions, you unlock true versions of them, where you assist in setting the timeline back to the way it's supposed to be by helping events unfold in the correct manner. Overall, I felt that the story was alright, it wasn't particularly mind-blowing, but it was a good way to take the events of so many different shows and fit them all into one story. Particularly, I really enjoyed the G Gundam storyline, as I'm a big fan of the show, and honestly, I think this might be the first game I've ever played that let me face off against the Dark Gundam, which is pretty cool in its own right. Now, as you progress through missions facing off against iconic Gundams and mobile suits alike, you unlock blueprints. These blueprints are used to unlock tons of different playable suits, of which there are more than 75, not including DLC. Some of these can be unlocked rather quickly, with just one or two copies of a blueprint being needed, while others, like the Sazabi, can take quite a bit of effort, requiring you to play through various missions several times to acquire all the blueprints necessary to unlock the unit. After a unit's unlocked, currency acquired from defeating enemies can be spent to upgrade and level it up, increasing stats such as ranged or melee damage, hit points, or boost amount, which we'll touch on what boost is in a bit. You also gain access to various pieces of equipment which can be used to further augment your suit's abilities. It's worth noting here as well that all units in the game are broken up into one of three different classes. All-rounders, which are sort of balanced and able to do okay in either ranged or melee combat, sharpshooters, which specialize in ranged specifically, and infighters who do best while up close and personal. To get into the specifics of what the various playstyles feel like though, we'll need to go into a little more detail as we discuss gameplay, which is definitely the main focus of this game. How does SD Gundam Battle Alliance actually feel to play? Overall, I found it surprisingly fun. My expectations were pretty low, but I'd say they were thoroughly exceeded. There are a couple negatives though that we should get out of the way. First is the controls. You should 100% play this on a controller, which is how I played, but even so, I would say the default controls are less than optimal. The right side of the controller is heavily used, making it a bit awkward to do multiple actions like boost around and switch targets simultaneously. Thankfully, controls are remappable, so some of this can be alleviated. The second is repetitiveness. I recently did a playthrough of Dynasty Warriors Gundam 3, which got quite repetitive a few hours in, and while I didn't feel that the level of repetitiveness here was quite on that level, there's definitely some of it, especially when you start replaying missions for blueprints. How you feel about this is going to strongly depend on how much you actually enjoy the game's combat and gameplay, which let's talk about that in a bit more detail. Controls are the same across the board, regardless of the unit you're using. Movement and camera controls are pretty standard, with the left stick being used for movement and the right for controlling your camera. Clicking the right stick puts you into a locked on state, and while locked on, you can flick your stick left or right to switch targets. Blocking is performed with the left trigger, and if timed correctly, you can perform a perfect guard or counter. If not timed correctly though, you'll block a large majority of incoming damage, however, you'll still take a small amount. Your primary ranged weapon is used with the right trigger, which depending on the suit, could take the form of a beam rifle, machine gun, or in the case of the burning Gundam, a ranged beam saber slash. R1 and L1 are used to perform sub-attacks, which vary greatly from unit to unit, and from my gameplay were typically more powerful than standard melee or ranged attacks, although restricted more in how many times they can be used before they need to be reloaded. X and Y, or square and triangle for PlayStation controller users, are used for light and heavy melee attacks. Depending on the suit, they can be tapped repeatedly to perform different combo strings. 
Holding down the light attack button performs an AoE, and holding down the heavy attack input performs an uppercut, sending your target into the air where you can jump with the A or X button to then continue comboing on them, inflicting more damage. Tapping and then holding down the jump input while you're already in the air allows you to fly around for a bit of time in a similar manner to how holding down B or circle allows you to glide across the ground at a speed that's much greater than walking. Doing both of these though consumes boost gauge, which you can see as a meter that's always present while fighting. Performing melee attacks also consumes this, so you have to be careful to not overextend yourself or you'll have to sit idly while you wait for it to recover. You may notice that in the bottom left hand corner of your screen next to your unit's portrait and HP, there are a couple meters. The first one, marked SPA, is your special attack meter. Once filled, you can use L1 and R1 to perform a special attack. These vary greatly and can be devastating attacks, buffs that last for a set period of time, or a combination of both. The blue bar is your skill meter, which, when filled to a certain point, allows you to use roll actions by using an input of left trigger and Y. Roll actions vary between the different types of units. All rounders gain the ability to attack and combo faster, infighters become resistant to stun or knockdowns, and sharpshooters instantly reload all their weapons when the action is used. In addition to your own unit, you also get to pick partners to bring with you into missions. You can't upgrade their suits, but if you've unlocked multiple suits that that character can pilot, you can choose what suit they bring in with them. Much like yourself, these partner units have a special attack meter that, when filled, allows them to unleash their own special attacks at your command by using either left or right on the d-pad. Now during a mission, if you happen to find yourself low on HP, you have access to repair kits that can be used by holding down the down input on the d-pad. It takes a few seconds to use one and can be interrupted, but doing so allows you to restore a nice chunk of HP. These same kits can also be used if your HP hits zero, so if you do get knocked down, your fight isn't over. You can also be revived by and revive your teammates if they happen to get knocked down too, so as long as you have teammates left, you're still in the fight. There are a couple other more specific nuances to combat, which are all covered in the game's tutorials, which I would say are well done in the fact that they're brief and do a good job explaining things by getting straight to the point. Overall, the game's combat seems to find a nice balance of being easy to pick up while taking time to master, and this is further expounded upon by each suit feeling quite different to play. There are some similarities between them, but the different sub-attacks really set different units apart from one another. Trying out the various units I unlocked throughout my journey was fun and kept the game engaging, although I found myself sticking to the Wing Gundam Zero and Burning Gundam the most after I unlocked them just because I preferred their playstyles. Another thing I'd like to mention is the voice acting in the game. It's really well done, but unfortunately, not dubbed in English. This isn't a huge deal when watching cutscenes or in story narrative sections, but it does make it a little hard to tell what's being said during combat while playing, as you have to take your eyes off the action to read the subtitles. If English voice acting was available, I feel like it could have made the game much more immersive. This isn't necessarily a negative, but it certainly would have improved my overall experience. The other sound effects in the game, though, are really well done, sounding like they came right out of the anime. Super impressive. From the sounds of various types of beam rifles firing, to suit movement and more, the game has quite crispy audio. Now, the big question. If you can't pick this up on sale, is it worth the full price of $59.99? Well, for me personally, I'd probably say no. That's not to say I didn't enjoy it, but I'd say this is one that would fit really well at something like a $39.99 price point. Unless you really love both Gundam and the game's combat, I don't think many folks would get more than 50 hours or so out of this one. Unless maybe you have a couple of friends that also want to play with you in the game's multiplayer co-op mode, then I could maybe see it. Now, if the game's on sale for around $30 or less, I'd highly recommend it to any Gundam fan. I thought it was a fun experience, plus the fact that it's on PC, where good Gundam games are few and far between, just makes it a win in my book. If you're looking for a Gundam game to play on PC while we await the arrival of Gundam Breaker 4, I'd say this is one to definitely keep your eye on, just in case it does happen to go on sale again sometime soon. Thanks for stopping by, this is Jarbo Gaming, we'll see you on the next one.